Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt. This is the first electric vehicle we've seen from Lexus. This is the new Lexus RZ, and I've been spending some time with it here in Texas, so we're gonna do things a little bit more POV style for logistical reasons. So we're gonna walk through the highlights, and then we're gonna go for a drive behind the wheel, and we're gonna do it all POV. So let me know down in the comments if you like that format. But this Lexus RZ, like I said, it's the first fully electric vehicle from Lexus, and I have to say, I'm a little split on it. So we're gonna hit the highlights, the best and the rest, starting with the rest. The first thing we'll talk about is the elephant in the room. And it's the thing that we all care about, and it's the range. It's a 71 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's dual motors for your direct four all wheel drive system. And the maximum that you can get in terms of range is like 220 miles. And if you want the big wheels and the luxury package and all that stuff, you can have as little as 196 miles of range. And I don't really like to use this word, but it's it's almost unacceptable uh, in this current marketplace when other things are getting closer to 300 and we're not even in 200, depending on what size wheels you get. This also is built on a 400 volt architecture, so it only accepts about 150 kilowatts of charging. You can charge 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes, but again, these aren't, these aren't class leading or segment leading numbers, so just a little bit to be desired in terms of the charging speed and the full capacity and range that you're gonna get from this RZ. And in tandem with that point, the next thing that we talk about is power. Now maximum output is 313 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. This thing's about 4,600 pounds and it'll do zero to 60 in about 4.6 seconds. So it's, it's not exactly slow, but we're so used to seeing headlines of all these new EVs bringing 500 plus horsepower and 700 pound-feet of torque. And this again is just kind of not there. And the third thing that we're gonna talk about is under the hood here. And look what you don't have, a uh, frunk. This is the ETNGA chassis, so it is a bespoke from the ground up EV chassis. So you would think that you would probably get a frunk here. You don't have it here, and I'm gonna show you why. So this actually itself isn't really that much of a bad thing because when you come back here to your actual trunk, you have a really big trunk. Again, I use my tripod extended like this to kind of use as a barometer of how big a trunk is and how practical it is. So right about here is where I say that this is a nice and practical trunk. So they've actually added quite a bit of space here. And you still have, of course, a little bit of, you know, compromises in terms of your roof line. But this is why I'm okay with them not giving you a frunk because they've added more usable space back there. The thing that I'm not okay with is prop rod for the hood. This is a Lexus, no prop rods for hoods. And the next thing is that there's no tow rating here. So I have no idea how much this could tow. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter because as we know, towing with EVs completely depletes the range. And if you've already got less than 200 miles to start with, then I wouldn't really wanna be towing anyway. But it is just kind of interesting to not have a towing capacity rating on this or the BZ4X. And the next thing is maybe just a bit of a nitpick for me, but RZ stands for Radiant Zero, and it's just a weird name. Like to me, for the Toyota version, it's BZ4X, so it's Beyond Zero. And I know that that relates to carbon emissions. They wanna not just net zero for carbon, but they wanna remove carbon. So, you know, this being Radiant Zero, I don't really know exactly what that means. And for our next point, we stay at the back here and you'll notice that it's missing something here. This and the BZ4X don't have rear windshield wipers. I mean, this isn't a Sportback. It's not like an Audi A7. It's not a wagon. This is a crossover. And I would think that it would have a rear windshield wiper. Now, supposedly these fins channel air and direct it in a certain way that it's gonna remove all of the water from your rear windshield. But at this angle, I don't know that it's really doing that much. And of course, there's the concern of how much weight is it gonna add? How much is it gonna affect the aerodynamics? But we're already under 200 miles of range. So, I mean, you might as well put it on there. And number seven, we're gonna talk about interior things that look nice, but maybe not so much. We'll step in here. And I will say, the interior itself is nice. I like the synthetic leather. This is a zero leather interior. There's a lot of recycled materials going on, and I think that's cool, and it's fitting with the mission of the car. But then we look in the center console. This is a big center console here, and it's just, it's just kind of plastic. You know, it's not wood. Again, this is, they've, they've talked to me about this specifically, and I get that it's trying to be recycled, and, and that's cool, but I do have a certain expectation of a Lexus. And then when we look at the center gauge, uh, gauge cluster, it is a screen, but you can definitely see where the screen ends. It's not the full 
it's not the full space that's the screen and it really only changes from blue to red so it's not like you're getting a lot of customizability from your digital cluster. And eighth and finally is just that you don't have a glove box. And they talked to me about this specifically too. They've removed the glove box here to give you more leg room, which it seems like you have, and that's great. And then you also have this kind of radiant heating thing to heat your legs because, you know, you don't, the more energy that you use for climate controls, the less you have in terms of range. So fine. They've got that there. They've removed this to give you more legroom, and they said that they replaced it in here, and they played with the lips to make it, you know, more practical. That's a bigger lip on the far side than you get here on this side. But to me, the things that I'm putting in my glove box are, like, important documents with, like, my address on it, and I know that it's kind of covered here, but I would like it completely closed off, so it's not exactly the same to go from here to there. But let's zoom out and talk about some of the good things because there are some pretty cool things happening with this new RZ. First is I think it looks cool. Now this one doesn't have the two-tone, but personally I thought the two-tone's kind of cool. It's a $1,200 option, but obviously you don't have to get it. But let's take a look from the front. Now I've got a nice kind of sharp tapered nose. This reminds me very much from this angle of the NX. Now of course your spindle grill is totally flush because obviously as an EV you don't need that. You do have some air intakes down there, but then you've got the classic Lexus L check. You don't have the triple beam projectors, but you do have like a contrasted darker gray over here. And then as we come around to the side, we can see how aggressive the nose is. Sorry for our dump truck friend. And then you've got some aero specific wheels. These are gonna be more range extending uh, wheels and tires. So you, you go up in rim size and you're gonna lose range. So this is probably the 220 mile range. And then you've got this gray accent that goes across your wheel arch, and then on the driver's side is where you have your charge port. It's manual, which is fine, and it's on the right side of the car, at least for my personal application. And then we've got black wing mirrors, we've got black window treatments, and then we've got a fully panoramic roof. It does have a bar that goes across, and I'll show you on the inside, but it does have that like electrochromic kind of shading, which actually works really well, it keeps the cabin uh, nice and cool, and I believe that's about a $600 option. Sorry, $500 option is what I meant to say. Now we come out here and look at the profile of the car. Again, this is about two inches shorter than an RX and about six inches longer than an NX. And you still have more back seat space and we'll get to that in a bit. But again, I think the, the shape looks pretty cool. I like this kind of jagged cut on the body here. You've got some nice accenting. And then of course on the side, it is interesting on an EV that they go for more protruding door handles. They don't recess into the body, but they are the the Lexus Digi door handle, which we tested first in the uh, NX about two years ago. Let me come around to the back and we have these really aggressive kind of fangs that I've been calling them. I think they look kind of cool. Again, we talked about no rear windshield wiper. And then we have a full width LED tail bar with Lexus spelled across. That looks nice. That looks a bit like an L, doesn't it? And then we've got some little fake arrow to give you a little bit more drama. And then from the back here, you've got a pretty standard diffuser look and you've got your Direct 4 badge, and I don't know, ultimately, I think it looks kind of cool. And number two, we talk about Direct 4. Now, I've made a video separately discussing what Direct 4 is and how robust a system it is, but I'll keep it brief here. It's an all-wheel drive system, and it works really, really well at maintaining power and traction through inclement weather, snow, ice, water, so, you know, things that I myself deal with as a Wisconsinite. And then next, we touched on this a little bit already, but I want to talk a little bit more about the trunk. Again, it's big, it's very deep, the load floor is nice and low, and you have additional storage under here for like your mobile charger or anything else. And of course, your seats fold 60-40 for a nice and practical cargo area. Number four, I wanna talk about tech stuff. Now, you have these touch sensitive buttons, which will show up, I'm sure you can't really see, but in your head up display to see what you're controlling, which I think is really cool. And you can kind of play with the customizability of it that, that way. We talked about your digital uh, instrument cluster, which is technically fully digital, though I wish it took up the whole space. But anyway, right here you have your digital rear view mirror, very nice. And you've got your huge new Toyota slash Lexus infotainment system. This is a very good system. You've got over-the-air updates, you've got dual Bluetooth connection, wireless CarPlay. This is what I'm looking for. It's quick, it's, up, it's snappy, it's responsive. We talk about your climate controls. Your temperature can control here. Your fan speed is here. It is in the screen, but it's constantly on the screen at all times. You also have an auto feature for things like your uh, heated and cooled seat, your heated steering wheel. 
And then I want to talk about the 360 cameras, which again are really nice. Great resolution, color, brightness. Nice job on the tech stack. And then transitioning from the technology, I want to talk about just general comforts. Like I said, you get heated seat, cooled seat, three level in the front. You've got a heated steering wheel, uh, double level. And again, you can put it on auto, kind of the climate concierge. So it'll read the exterior and the interior and see if you want your, your butt warm or cold. And then also you can get heated seats in the rear. Pretty nice. And number seven is the drive. Ooh, we did get a little bit of wheel spin. We're not even in the most sportiest setting. But I mean, it's not slow, you know, and this is kind of, when I say that this car gets a bit of a bad rap, it's because people will judge it without driving it and they'll just see on paper, okay, it only has 313 horsepower, 320 pound feet, but zero to 60 is done in under five seconds. And okay, well, the range isn't a huge number and I'm not going to defend the range here, but this, when you actually get behind the wheel and drive it, and you don't just look at it from a spec sheet and on paper, it becomes much more of the Lexus product that you're, you would be expecting. The ride is really, really smooth. You have adaptive suspension here. You've got power that builds gradually. That doesn't just snap your neck. It just kind of builds in a more organic and conventional fashion. And it's, it's, it's got some drive noise, but not too much. It's not too over the top and shouty. It is, it is very much a Lexus experience. The cabin feels nice and quiet and solid. And it just feels nice. When I want to get my foot into it, I can pick up. When I gotta get off of it, I can relax. I've got great visibility out the front. This cockpit does feel a little bit tighter than maybe I would want for kind of a mid-size crossover type thing, but you know, it's fine. It is, it is not gonna bring that, you know, thousand horsepower, you know, Tesla Model S Plaid competitor, Model X, Y, whatever. It's, it's not really that. What it is, is a very complete, very comfortable driving experience. If you're just gonna be commuting, you know, day to day, um, you know, to work and back, you probably don't need a huge range number and you don't need huge performance numbers. So those things are good at grabbing headlines and selling cars, but the thing that's gonna get missed here with this RZ is the fact that it is just smooth, it's comfy. The problem, and I will say, the problem with that is a lot of these EVs are just smooth and just comfy. So, you know, things like the yoke steering wheel, we have a normal EPS steering rack here. We don't have the steer by wire like we do with the yoke steering wheel, but that's gonna be the thing that kind of gets attention. So this to me feels like a smoother, quieter, more relaxed, more refined, more luxurious, I would say, Lexus RX, which I believe still is their best selling vehicle. So. Yeah, it doesn't have a huge range number or power number or a low zero to 60 time, but it's still plenty good for, I think, what it is. And I think for that, we head into the final thoughts. So that's the best and the rest of the new Lexus RZ. To be honest, it does give me a little bit of that vibe that I got from the BZ4X in the sense that Lexus and Toyota kind of did this and they went full battery electric, not because they wanted to and they were passionate about it, but they had to have something to compete with all of the other things. That being said, this is a lot better in person than it appears on paper. But when we really boil it down to what you have to have and can't have, it needs a bit more range to be more practical. So for me, this might be a skip, unfortunately. But leave it down in the comments. What do you think? And we'll see you in the next one.